The land of Thedas has been through many ages, and within each of these ages, many historical events of importance have defined them for good and for bad, and in turn, have adapted the traditions, cultures, and lives of those within the land. With venturing into a new world, full of lore, races, war, and history, we need to know the basics of Thedas before exploring the large world, and so, to begin this new lore series about the world of Dragon Age, we need to at least know how historical events have changed the world through the ages. From the creation of the Vale, the presumed extinction of dragons, the rise and fall of major civilizations, the persecution of the elves, and many lost cities, temples, and realms scattered throughout Thedas and dimensions, the people of this land have truly lived through some exciting yet dangerous times. What are the nine ages of the Dragon Age timeline, and why are they named accordingly? Here we explore, in a brief overview of the ages of Thedas and what define them. While there are various cultures in Thedas that track time and dates in their own way, the Chantry calendar is considered the most widely used across the world. When established over 900 years ago, the founders of the Chantry decided that for every 100 years, a new age would be established, and anything before the formation of the Chantry would be considered as the Ancient Age, which the years would count backwards from the date of the establishment of the calendar. On the 99th year of each age, the current divine of the Chantry would name the following age based on signs and a prediction of what the next age would bring. With each age being just as eventful as the last, the divines had no trouble predicting what the next age could bring, and through their belief in the Maker, their predictions normally seemed to be accurate, especially for the Dragon Age. Prior to the establishment of the Chantry and its calendar, the Ancient Age is home to the many important events that set up Thedas completely for its rough story. Within this age, the Elves had once dominated the land where their original civilization, the Elvenen, traveled across the whole of Thedas where they used magic for even the basic tasks in their lives. It was a part of their civilization and sown into their lifeblood. It is believed that in 7600 ancient, 7600 years before the formation of the Chantry, the great and fabled city of Arlathan was created, a place of great significance to the Elves. During this golden age, the Elves lived eternal lives without a barrier between the Fade and our realm that we know now, but this age of perfection would not last forever. With the Elves above ground, the Dwarves under the Earth began to create their own world, where they lived in peace with the Elves above. At approximately 3100 Ancient, it is believed that the first human tribes arrived in Thedas. The combination of meeting humanity and the elves discovering that their immortality had begun to fade after the creation of the Vale created a divide between the two species. With the human population growing, they would later conquer the land and set up their own civilizations where the elves had once occupied. While the humans defiled the elven land and forced them out through barbaric means, the dwarves underneath the surface had been creating underground settlements which they would call Dwarven Thags. To access these Thags, the dwarves created the deep roads to easily navigate to their settlements. During this age, they could wander the roads mostly in peace as the Darkspawn would not exist for a while. By 2800 Ancient, the Old Gods began to whisper to the Noromenian human tribe, and through their dreams, they taught the first humans magic. Thousands of years later, in 395 Ancient, the Noromenian tribe had further divided into new tribes and conquered new regions of Thedas, where they had grown to learn the world around them and build up grand civilizations using magic, just like the elves had done before them. Within the Tevinter Imperium, those gifted with magical ability heard the whispers of the old gods from within the Fade, a realm hidden away from Thedas by the Vale. Within this realm, the Golden City stood, believed by humans to be the seat of the Maker, a holy place for the God. While in Elven culture, they believed the Golden City to be a prison for their old gods and that Fen Harel stayed within the Fade, which they called the Beyond, to make sure the gods did not escape. Having heard the call of the old gods in the Fade and with the hopes to physically enter the Golden City, 
Seven powerful magisters of Tevinter use blood magic to physically enter the Fade, and upon entering the Golden City, it is said that the Golden City turned to black, and the magisters that had defiled this holy place were cast back into Thedas as the first Darkspawn. With this plague, everything these magisters touched would corrupt, and in turn, this would trigger the first Blight. With a formidable enemy seeking to destroy Thedas, the Grey Wardens were formed to combat them, in which they succeeded 192 years later in 203 Ancient. During this year, Andraste was born in a broken Thedas, where the populace were dealing with the aftermath of the First Blight. In 186 Ancient, Andraste would speak of the Maker who had spoken to her within her dreams. Through her life, Andraste led an invasion on the Tevinter Imperium, believing their magic to have caused too much chaos in the world. She began to preach to those around her of the Maker, and that magic should serve man and not rule over him. With her husband, Mafarath, they led the first exalted march against the Tevinter Imperium. As Andraste's word spread across Thedas, those who felt abandoned by their own gods converted to believing in the Maker. Over the years, the cult of Andraste formed where they worshipped the Maker together, and this would only grow stronger in 170 Ancient where Andraste's husband would betray her, resulting in her death. It is said that he betrayed her in return for land in the south of Thedas. Although dead, the cult of Andraste would become the dominant religion in Thedas. By three Ancient, many cults of the Maker existed across Thedas, that was, until Cordelius Draken of the Orlesian Empire claimed that Andraste had appeared to him within a dream, and charged him with redeeming the world in the eyes of the Maker. Now older and with power, he brought the separated cult of Andraste together and formed the Chantry, where Andrasteism was established as a national religion. As many of these events have been passed down through cultures and religions, the recounting and tellings of these events differ depending on the various groups that have been told them. With the Chantry formed and the first divine declared as Justinia I, the Chantry created the calendar and declared the first age as the divine age based on the first divine having been named. With the first age in day being on 1-1 divine, Thedas could only hope that this age would stay divine, but that would not be the case. During this age, the second blight struck Thedas. After the first exalted march, the Tevinter Imperium refused to aid in the upcoming battle. In spite of this, Dracon and his empire continued to thrive where the Chantry became more widely accepted across Thedas. To this, the Navaran Accord was established in 120 Divine, which formed the Circle of Magi where the Chantry could control and monitor the mages of Thedas. With the mages under their control, the Chantry disbanded their Inquisition into two factions, the first being the Templar Order, who acted as the Chantry's army where they would defend it and fight for it, as well as being tasked with watching over the mages that had submitted to the Circle, while also hunting down the apostates that attempted to flee. The second faction being the Seekers of Truth, who acted as a governing force for the Templars to make sure they were doing their duties efficiently while investigating events for the Chantry. With increasing Darkspawn attacks, the army against the Blight reached out to the Elves of the Dales in which they refused due to their horrid treatment from the humans. This would only increase the tension between the races. By 195 Divine, the climax of the Second Blight came to a head as the willing armies of the nations across Thedas came together with the Grey Wardens to defeat the Archdemon Zazakel. As this war had resulted in the destruction of many areas of Thedas, the people of the land returned to their nations and rebuilt stronger than before, and now the land would once again thrive. With the Divine Age coming to an end, the reigning divine, Divine Hortensia I, predicted the upcoming age to be a grand rebirth of Thedas after the aftermath of the Second Blight and the defeat of the Archdemon Zazakel. With this, she named the Second Age, the Glory Age. While in high spirits, this positive attitude would not last for long, as the tension between the humans and the elves had been escalating for a while at this point. The humans of Orle clashed with the elves of the Dales, which resulted in an open war that lasted for 10 years, resulting in the defeat of the elves once again after the ever-growing Orlesian Chantry called in for reinforcements from other Andrastan countries. With this religious crusade, 
the elves of the Dales were forced to flee, and for those that did not, they were forced to live within alienages within the towns of the humans where they would be looked down upon by the humans and treated extremely awfully. In 283 Glory, the first rite of annulment was committed against the Navarin circle of mages after they summoned a demon. This annulment meaning the death of all mages within the circle in an attempt to contain the problem. With a new age upcoming, in 299 Glory, the Grand Cathedral of Val Royo was finally completed after 200 years of construction where its towers could be seen from miles away. With this, the Divine named the upcoming Third Age, the Towers Age. With the Grand Cathedral of Val Royo now the location of the heart of the Andrastian Chantry, it continued to grow stronger. In Three Towers, it is believed that Flemeth, also known as the Witch of the Wilds, was born during this year. In 310 Towers, the Darkspawn discovered and awoke the old god Toth, in which the Third Blight began, hitting Thedas hard. This time, the Grey Wardens were aided by the armies of both Orle and Tevinta, where they successfully defeated the Archdemon Toth 15 years later in 325 Towers. While these nations had worked together during this fight, the Tevinta Imperium Chantry removed their association with the Orlesian Chantry after a disagreement with their views of the use of magic. The Orlesians believed magic should be controlled and used only to aid man instead of ruling over them, while the Tevintans believed the opposite. With this, the Imperial Chantry began to elect its own divine where they would follow their own beliefs. With an upcoming age, the Orlesian Chantry announced the upcoming Fourth Age to be the Black Age, this in response to the new divine in the north being both a male and a mage, both of these being things the Orlesian Chantry disagreed with. This divine became known as the Black Divine, while the Orlesian Divine became known as the White Divine. The tension between the Chantries escalated through the Black Age to the point where the Orlesian Chantry would attempt to bring the Tevinta Imperium Chantry back under their control through four exalted marches, all of which would fail in taking Mimrathos, the capital of the Tevinta Imperium. With these failed attempts, the two Chantries' hopes for reconciliation fell further. With the Fifth Age coming up, Divine Justinia II foresaw an age of continued tension between the two chantries, and so she named it the Exalted Age. While the war was important to both sides, their conflict had to stop in 512 Exalted after the outbreak of the Fourth Blight with the Archdemon Andoral leading the Darkspawn. With the Tevinta and Orlesian empires occupied with their own needs, the responsibility of saving Thedas fell to the Grey Wardens where an elf named Garahel united the willing of Thedas. Although successful, the death of the Archdemon in 524 Exalted also resulted in the death of Garahel. While a Grey Warden was lost, the assault on the Darkspawn resulted in a huge chunk of them being wiped out, resulting in less of them being able to search for the next old god. With Thedas having survived another blight, and with Ole and the Tevinta Imperium at war, Kalanhad Thirin united the Alamari human tribes under one banner and founded Ferelden in 542 Exalted, a place which would form its own twisted and brutal history. Within the northeast of Thedas, in 599 Exalted, Queen Madrigal of Antiva was murdered and discovered with four steel swords plunged into her chest. After hearing news of this, Divine Theodosia I is haunted by this image in her dreams, and upon waking up, she declared the Sixth Age, the Steel Age. With a new age, a new war, this time between the Canari and the Tevinta Imperium after the Canari discovered the island of Parvolin in 630 Steel, took it for themselves and attempted to forcibly convert the residents to their religion, the Kun. In 632 Steel, after attempting to continue taking land from the other nations of Thedas, the nations fought back. During this time, the hunting of dragons began to extremely limit their numbers to the point where some believed them to shortly be extinct. With the Canari taking locations occupied by the Tevinta Imperium, they had begun a war that would last for the rest of this age and part of the next. Foreseeing a storm of violence across Thedas due to the Canari attempts to conquer the land and force the Kun on its residence, in 699 Steel, the reigning divine, Divine Hortensia III, named the upcoming Sixth Age the Storm Age. During this age, Orlesian and Imperial Chantries came together to fight against the Canari, which resulted in three exalted marches against the invaders. 
While the Orlesians, Imperial Chantry and Canary fought, the Grey Wardens that had protected Thedas through the Blights were banished from Ferelden after their Warden Commander, Sophia Dryden, had attempted to forcibly take control of Ferelden, but had failed. This event would ruin the good name and reputation that the Grey Wardens had formed over the ages. While the Grey Warden Order, now a tarnished name after Sophia's attempt, the Canary Wars had finally come to an end where the Peace Treaty of Flaumerin was signed by the Canary and all of the human nations but one, the Tevinter Imperium. As the Tevinter Imperium had initially entered this conflict after Parvolin had been taken from them by the Canari, they stayed at war with them attempting to reclaim their land. This age of conflict had changed the fate of Thedas with new allies, but new enemies. As the Storm Age came to an end, the Chantry named the upcoming Eighth Age the Blessed Age, due to the end of the war with the Canari and the Emperor Etienne having had twin boys. These positive notes had gave the Divine the belief that this upcoming age would be full of bounty and prosperity. What started as a great age for the Orlesians continued, but not for the Ferelden's, as the Orlesian Empire invaded Ferelden in 824 Blessed, and 20 years later, they had successfully taken over. Although successful in their takeover, the Ferelden Rebellion grew stronger each day where the Thirin royal bloodline who had sat on the throne since the inception of Ferelden fought in the hope that one day they would reclaim their land from the Orlesians. Due to how the Thirin family had treated their subjects, the nobles and people of Ferelden helped the rebellion in secret. As King Brandel Thirin had been defeated during the invasion of Lothering to the Orlesian invasion, his daughter, Queen Moira Thirin, attempted to keep the fight alive, that was, until she was murdered in front of her son, Marek Thirin. Through the aid of the resistance and the help of his trusted friend, Loghain Maktir, Marek took Ferelden back from the Orlesian Empire and once again sat on the throne. As the age came to an end, King Marek and Queen Rowan restored Ferelden back to its rightful royal bloodline. With the Blessed Age coming to an end, Divine Faustine II decided that the upcoming age would be the Sun Age, using the symbol of the Orlesian Empire predicting a great age for them. But before she could declare it officially, she heard rumours of the return of dragons that had been believed to be extinct. With this news, Divine Faustine II declared the upcoming Ninth Age as the Dragon Age. As the scholars of the Chantry believed this to be an omen, they prepared for an age of violence and upheaval. With Ferelden now free from Orlesian rule and a new ruler on the throne, King Marek is approached by the banished Grey Wardens who believed that a new blight was on its way. After going on an adventure to the Deep Roads, Marek deemed this information to be true, and with Ferelden's best interest in mind, he allowed the Grey Wardens access into Ferelden, where they could recruit new warriors to fight in the upcoming war. With a blight on the way, dark forces plotting, and a war on the horizon, this age would be nothing but peaceful, and it would be full of war, betrayal, death, and magic. The sightings of the dragon and the Chantry's belief that this age would be full of violence and upheaval was correct. The scholars looking back at this age would surely have a fascinating time looking back at all of the major events to happen and maybe prepare for future ones. The fall of the Grey Wardens of Ostagarth, the Fifth Blight, the Champion of Kirkwall, the New Inquisition, and the return of Fen Harel are all major moments that have changed Thedas forever, and these events have only occurred up until 944 Dragon. This age still has 56 years to go. What we do know is that this age will still be full of excitement and memorable events that could change Thedas forever. As this is the first episode in a new lore series, I really wanted to start with a video that would lay the basic groundwork of the world of Dragon Age. I have left out some events that happened within these ages, but this was just to get a grasp of the ages themselves and why they were named the way they were. I cannot wait to go more into depth about some of these events. Dragon Age made history fun. Andraste's life, the Golden City, the horrible treatment of the elves and the Vale are already some of the topics I cannot wait to cover, and those are just a few from the top of my head. I did not say much about the Dragon Age as this was just an overview and as we know, so much happens during this age as we play through them. I think I will go more into depth about the events with Marek because his stories are great, his fight with the Rebellion and his adventures with the Grey Wardens in The Calling. 
This timeline is fascinating, and out of every one I've looked at, this is my favourite. This was a brief overview of the ages in Dragon Age. This was an absolutely fun episode to write and put together. If you enjoyed this episode, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like and a comment on your thoughts. If you really liked it, then go ahead and subscribe. Please consider subscribing, I have much more to come. If you would like to stay up to date with everything I get up to outside of YouTube, then go and follow my Twitter and Instagram. I also stream on both YouTube and Twitch every Friday where we are currently playing through Fallout New Vegas and Alien Isolation. The link is in the description if you are interested. Finally, I would like to thank my patrons who are helping to support the channel. I really appreciate you. Thank you to The Old Gods, Avi WV, Arco, Austin Moody, Brunette Janas, and Jojo Scotia. And an extra special thank you to the Elder Ones tier, Scrush Room, Jonas, Lewis, and Queen Arby. Thank you guys so much. What did you think of this lore video? Did I miss out anything of pure significance? Would you like to play a Dragon Age game set in one of the early ages? Do you think the Tevinter Chantry has better beliefs than the Orlesian? In my opinion, I always play as a magic based character, and so I would not like to be persecuted for using magic. I guess I would not like to be governed by any Chantry, they both have questionable ethics. I'd happily live free from a Chantry, and try to keep my magic in control. If you have any suggestions for future Dragon Age lore videos, please let me know below. I do have a list forming, and I already have the next episode written. I think that was everything, now enjoy your day. Bye.